I'm your host, Marshall Florence, with Just As Talk Show Podcast Live. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in. For you know I'm always ready for you when you tune in because I got some good news for you. Well, when I say good news, it's because, you know what, ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of resources out in the community that you don't get a chance to always come across. So we take the shortcut and get that information for you. And we invite a lot of the uh, resource network individuals back to tell us personally. So today I have a recurring guest and she comes quite quite frequently, but it was always a, a resourceful amount of resources for you to use. So I don't want to waste a lot of time with my introduction. So we're going to have her, you know, come on in. My, my special guest and good friend, Lori Hill Sanders, executive record, executive director of Disability Network of Wayne County, Detroit. Well, where is she at? Good morning, Miss Sanders. Good morning, Marsha. How are you? I'm glad. Glad to have you here joining me today. Glad to be here. Okay. Okay. Now, Lori, you know when you come so frequently, and I should say that because you know when when you come, you got a wealth of information and resources to share with us. So I need you to just back up a little bit so people can know who you are and what you do over there at Disability Network of Wayne County, Detroit. Absolutely. Um, Disability Network Wayne County, Detroit is a nonprofit organization. We are community driven, consumer driven. Uh, we provide advocacy services, education, outreach, and resources for people within the, with disabilities so that they're able to live independently in their community, barrier-free, um, with access and inclusion within their community. Thank you, Lori. So, you know, a lot of times, like... Right about now, we're still sifting through the pandemic periods and, you know, things are getting better, but not 100 percent. We do know that our, our disability population, to me, suffered the most because it's limited getting out, getting around, getting the resources and connecting with uh, individuals that can support whatever the needs are. So today I wanted to go over some some things that you have going on. And if you don't mind, I want to start off with this this first page. This first screen, Lori, is really, really nice. So it says changing lives, changing communities. OK, is that what that is? It's beautiful. Absolutely. Changing lives changing communities and breaking barriers and breaking barriers that is beautiful i don't know who did that artwork but i really <laughs> really admired that that is a beautiful now is this you guys new logo or is this just uh something new that you guys have developed no that was just um a cover sheet that my graphic person was able to design for our annual report but the logo uh, it still stays the same that's in the corner um, at the bottom of the page. Okay. Okay. All right. So, Laura, you know what? Uh, a lot of times when um, a person like yourself come back as often as you do, it's because we know you have some upcoming resources or events happening. So I wanted to go through a couple of the uh, report pages that you sent over so that we can tell the viewers what goes on at Disability Network, because a lot of people are not sure if they should be able to utilize the services for themselves or just their family members, but it sounds like a little bit of both. So let me go to this page here uh, about Disability Network of Wayne County, Detroit. So can you uh, give me a briefing of your mission and the different levels you have here? Absolutely. Uh, Marsha, our, our mission is to empower, educate, and advocate for individuals with disabilities while promoting independent living, inclusion, and accessible pathways. Um, the Disability Network of Wayne County, Detroit serves Detroit and Wayne County. However, um, there are actually 15 of us, um, Centers for Independent Living, which you may sometimes hear the SIL, 
CIL, Centers for Independent Living. There are actually 15 of us in the state of Michigan, mm -hmm. and we provide services throughout the state, those 15 sister centers. Okay. We have an eastern region, region as well as a western region. Okay, okay. I think we'll come across that page with all those listings, and I'm sure because people always want to know if they don't live in a certain area, how they can connect with a resource such as uh, yours. So that's great to know. All right, so here, Consumer Driven 20, 2020, 2021. What's going on with this Consumer Driven? I mean, you guys do a lot of things, so tell us about this. Well, you know, um, that's the whole premise or foundation behind a Center for Independent Living, Marsha. You're speaking about organizations that are operated by individuals with disabilities that serve individuals with dis disabilities. So that's what where you come with that whole consumer driven um, premise that my staff um, are the people that we serve. Now, Lori, so on here, you know, it talks about employment. It talks about, mm -hmm. uh, you know, assistance. So give me an idea when someone comes to your office and they want to seek employment or something. I mean, is there is there uh, personnel on staff that works with a person or persons to talk about how to achieve employment? Well, what we have, Marsha, we have two ways that that happens. That happens um, sometimes through our partnership with Michigan Rehab Services, where um, MRS counselors will direct their consumers to us. We will provide them with advocacy services, um, soft skill training, job exploration, OJT, work-based learning experiences. So, you know, one way we receive individuals that we can serve are through MRS. And then we do also provide programming for our commute consumers that may not come to us through MRS that we're able to provide them with employment services as well. Okay. All right. All right. That's a good thing to know. I mean, it's, to me, it's plentiful jobs out here, but I, I don't see right where, now. you know, a, a lot of the, the companies that are saying we don't have uh, enough staff. I often wonder, do they consider working with agencies such as yours to consider hiring persons with disabilities? Because just because a person has a disability doesn't mean they're, they're not employable. You know, you may have to do some training like you would any, any other individual. So why not work with an agency? or organization that can provide uh, soft skills as well as with the state for sure a tax credit or um, a voucher or a program that will pay for a week or two of training. So sometimes I don't think the employers really uh, consider the fact that people with disabilities are just as employable as anyone else and you know give someone a chance. I will agree with you Marsha with that and there are a lot of incentives for employers to hire people with disabilities. And I think that the true changing agent for that is educating those corporations, those employees, because they don't know. They mm -hmm. don't know that there is a very um, talented workforce, a very dedicated workforce through um, people with, with disabilities. They just require training. And then some people with disabilities have to also be educated to know that they can work and still receive their benefits. Yeah. Sometimes that's a huge dilemma when people um, are led to believe that if I'm working, I will not be able to receive my benefits any longer. So that's why um, benefit planning is a critical service that we provide to our consumers so that they know based on what disability benefits they're currently receiving, they know how much they can work without jeopardizing their health care mm -hmm. or all the other disability be benefits that they receive. So that's a critical part of it too, our consumers to know that they can work and still receive their benefits. 
I, I hope there's a lot of people tuning in today, Lori, to, to hear that because I've always preached that, you know, people are so nervous uh, and feel intimidated to go and get employment because they say they're going to cut me off. They're going to cut me off. You first got to do your homework and understand what the laws are. And then even if uh, you think that they're going to cut you off, the ideal is for you to get better, do better, live better. So, you know, some things are a trade off. And, and the, the most important thing, a tool to me in the workforce is your benefit package if you've got medical coverage you you betting a, a thousand right there you may be disappointed in the money but if you got uh, vision hearing dental uh full body coverage it's like a car <laughs> you you want you want coverage you're absolutely right yeah. so, so and that when we start to talk about um breaking barriers and accessibility and inclusiveness Sometimes that requires, if not all times, that requires some kind of economic sustainability. So by incorporating work with those benefits that you're you're receiving allows you to live a more economical, economically sustainable lifestyle. And that's why it's so important that we even go into the high schools and we have a pre ed program where we're actually in the high schools talking with parents because you will have a lot of parents that are, they don't want their youth to be trained in terms of employment because they are concerned if their child is gonna lose their disability benefits. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. sometimes they're not very strong advocates for their kids receiving work-based training or job exploration or career exploration activities. So it's so important to go into those schools provide that information to the parents so that you can empower them as well so that they know um, they're not jeopardizing their child's benefits by allowing them to work right. or be trained to work in an industry as well. Right. We, we need to do better with educating our, our, our parents. We really do. To take the fear out of the future. And that's what it's about. Right. Yep. So let me go to this next one here, Lori. Um, oh, okay. Response program, mobile market. I, you know, I had to ask about this mobile market now. So <laughs> tell us about this mobile market. This is a beautiful picture here. So tell us about this mobile market. Thank you, Marsha. Um, what we actually did, we really had to restructure some things and really pivot during COVID and, and really change our whole service delivery. As you know, uh, people with disabilities were some of the folks that were most, that were impact the hardest, that were devastated the hardest during COVID. So, you know, doing those food distributions out in the community, uh, we actually had, um, we did lots of food box distributions and then we um, gravitated to actually doing mobile market distributions. We have a, a, a phenomenal, a relationship partnership with Featherstone Garden that allows us to be able to have access to those fresh foods, fresh vegetables. Um, I really became, um, Living Green became very important to me during COVID because so many of our people with disabilities had all those underlying health issues that were kind of Coupling mm -hmm. that with COVID was just making it almost a death sentence. So I really got involved with um, green living um, from kitchen, from the garden to the table to beautiful. kitchen greens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that became very important to me when I started to realize um, how in, how people with disabilities had all these underlying health issues that were going on. And I felt that it was so important to introduce green, clean eating and living. And that's where this partnership came in with Featherstone Garden. Those are just some pictures of, of the garden. Those are just some pictures of some of the things that they were able to reproduce into meals from the garden. And just trying to teach our consumers how to eat healthy, live healthy, um, because being in poor health mm -hmm. was not a good thing, coupling that with COVID, and as we saw that in our community. You know, and a lot of our elders, uh, and not all of them, but some, most of our elders come from the South. So they were used yeah. to 
uh, fresh fruit and, and vegetables from the garden, and they knew how to perish them and take care of, you know, uh, the, the vegetables and stuff. And so it's not brand new to them, but the idea to have the opportunity to, to be a part of a gardening project is just, it's, yeah. it's heartfelt because they understand. They truly understand. I mean, the very first time uh, I went south uh, with my dad, who, who, well, he was a farmer after he retired, you know, from, from up here in Great Lakes still. So the very first time I went to the farm with my dad and I actually saw a potato in the ground and I saw uh, pecans on a tree and I saw watermelon you know everything I saw I was like I didn't know they do that I didn't know because by the time you get it you see it in the store but everyone right. who's been raised on a farm this is nothing new to them how to you know resourceful to use things from the ground and take them in the house and, and make dinner out of them here in the yeah. north we're like oh man what am I going to eat today if it's not fast food we get upset about it <laughs> and don't think about what's in the garden Right. Yeah, but our elders. So moving back to that. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Moving back to that whole gardening piece. Um, we actually have a program for seniors on Saturday. It's a one day program, it's probably about a three to four hour program on Saturdays. They meet. Um, this is in partnership with Featherstone Garden, and they have a program where they're teaching them about canning. They're teaching them how to plant things in their windows, herbs, and it's really um, so. If we have any any of any individuals within the audience that are interested in that sun garden program that we have, it is every Saturday, and all you have to do is go onto our website and you can sign up um, for that program. And it's really. You know, it's a one-time program, but we just have seniors that come back and say, well, I just want to come back. You don't have to count me, but I just want to come back. <laughs> Look, if you find somebody learn how to can, the, the yeah. peaches and, and, and pear preserves is, is, is the top of my list right there, okay? Canning mm -hmm. is, is, is tops. So that's wonderful. So, Lori, okay, now, yeah, I see you have these online classes and information. Is that same program you were just talking about? Is that on this list here? Because you've got a welcome. That is what you're actually showing is a little bit different, Marsha. Okay. Um, and what we have is um, we've got tons of peer support groups. We have art therapy, um, we have a no wrong door program, working with individuals with sickle cell, we have a garden club. If you just look through here, these are all the different um, programs that we have available. And all you have to do is go onto our website and um, go to the, the portal of the, the, the class that you would want to attend and join us. That's great, that's great. I see the art yes. therapy. As well as, as highlighted in a garden club, okay. Oh uh, yeah. Let me say, let me ask you this. So, what do you guys do with the uh, working with sickle cell program? That is a program um, where, in partnership with MRS, and pri primarily what that is is empowerment and self advocacy, um, letting or providing um, our consumers with sickle cell just some background information of how they need to be able to navigate themselves in the workplace so that they can be successful employers. Um, mm -hmm. Knowing what, what occupations are suitable, which occupations are less mm -hmm. because of the health issues that they have. So it's just really an, a program that empowers individuals with sickle cell so that they're able to work on their job, get a job, their job, and know all the things that they need to do to empower them at their work. That's great. That's great. That's great. So let me see here. No Wrong Door program. What's that all about, Lori? No Wrong Door. That was a program that um, we started because of COVID. Seniors were unable to um, get out. A lot of our seniors were experiencing social isolation. Um, there was a lot of depression going on. You had seniors that were pretty much confined to um, the facilities that they lived in. They didn't have very much access to their loved ones, family members. So we developed and designed online programming as well as outside programming when things started to, when when 
things started to change in terms of mm -hmm. what the restrictions were mm -hmm. regarding COVID. And I mean, we would take the seniors, they went to see Charlie Wilson at the um, Aretha Franklin Theater. Um, they went to the DIA. They've gone to Millican Park for picnics, the zoo. It was just a very um, innovative, fun way to get them out into the community and try to decrease that social isolation. Yeah. We took a group of seniors to um, Ribs and Soul last year with us. Um, last year, we partnered with Ribs and Soul to actually bring entertainment to their senior centers. So it was just, it, it was a huge, um, it made a huge impact. And it is truly our seniors needed at that time um, Lord, during COVID. Let me ask you COVID. this. What age uh, yeah. qualifies for seniors in your program? I think it's, what is it, Marsha, 52, 55? I know 55 is considered seniors, but, you know, the activities that you, that you uh, just spoke of, I wanted to make sure that I was in that ballpark so I could sign up for stuff. <laughs> So I can sign up for some of these things. I'm like, y'all took them where? Okay. <laughs> I need my yeah, senior discount they had card. a wonderful like, time. Yeah, but you know what? <laughs> but just knowing that people are having a great time and have an opportunity to network and come out of the social isolation is it's, it's just beautiful. Whether it's gardening, yeah. concerts, or, uh, you know, a card game or something, community services. Art. Yes, all those things are, are, are very supportive. And it, it's sad if you find someone that's not, you know, um, able to recognize that there's programs out here uh, that can support them to make sure that they're not you know, alone. You know, it's, it's almost like you got to go door to door and knock on a person's door and say, hey, would you like to be a part of this? And, uh, you know, right. or get them involved. It's like pulling teeth. But once they get involved, they can't wait to the next the next venture. Yeah. Yeah, and you guys do you such know, a Marcia, wonderful job. To add to that, we also have transportation that's available. So if seniors um, during the no wrong door, if you were a senior and you needed to transportation to go to the movies because you were going to meet someone or a friend or something at the theater, if you want, you know, we actually even provide a transportation to our seniors so that they could get different places to just kind of really decrease that whole social isolation that That's so great. many of us experience during That's great. COVID. And I think some of us are still experiencing it and having, you know, concerns about is it safe to really just get back out there to a norm or not? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, most definitely. So, Lori, you, st you spoke about your, your sister agencies, and uh, I see that this list here is about 15 different uh, disability ne networks from, I see, Flint, yes. Kent County, Jackson, Port Huron. So, ladies and gentlemen, you know, don't ever think when you see a program like this, we are uh, speaking to the executive director herself, uh, Lori Hill Sanders for the Wayne County, Detroit area. But look at the list here or, you know, you can give us a call and find out where is a location, near, the location nearest you. So with all these listings here that Lori has provided for us today, it lets you know that you can connect with any of the disability networks in your city or, uh, you know, in your surrounding areas to get some resources. And I, I thank you for this, Lori, because all the wonderful things that you're doing in Wayne County, Detroit, you know, some probably, some probably I'm sorry, someplace else is probably wondering, do they do the same thing? No, <laughs> not to say that you all do the same thing, but at least they can call that location and find out uh, readily what types of services that they provide in that area. Absolutely, yes. Exactly okay. Right, Marsha. Okay. Now, before we wrap up, Lori, I, I got a flyer and I, I got to bring that up. So, you got to tell us about this uh, ADA 32. Well, Yes, we are celebrating um, our 30, 32nd year of ADA, um, and we are having a huge celebration at Millican State Park. That's going to be July the 26th. Um, we have a full agenda. We're going to have food trucks, um, music, um, card games, table games. Um, family feud, giveaways, entertainment, art. Um, it's really, really a celebration. And um, if anybody is able to come out and join us on that day, um, it's marked 
July the 26th. And we're just really looking forward to our ADA celebration. So please, um, RSVP, call us okay. at 313-923-165 and RSVP so you can be a part of the celebration. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, so we left it up there for a few minutes, Lori, so people can copy that information down. But ladies and gentlemen, if you miss it, uh, you know, give us a call at 1-800-323-5336, and we will provide the same information about this event so that you won't miss the opportunity to register on time. Now, July 26 is coming up. It's on a Tuesday. Don't get it confused. Yes. It's a Tuesday event at 11 a.m. to 3, which sounds like a wonderful time to have an event. So, And that's good. Now, and Lori, you know, uh, there's a lot of events going on, so we'll be back with uh, our second annual Health and Fun Fair, and we look forward to you guys joining us in in october so we'll talk talk again yes. about that but i want to make sure that ladies and gentlemen you can always give us a call at 1-800-323-5336 and Lori hill sanders information as well as other in individuals information you can just give us a call we'll we'll provide it for you okay we'll connect you to those to those individuals so Lori, is there anything else you want to tell us before we wrap up here no just please please i can't emphasize enough go to our web which is www.dnwayne.org. We've got tons of activities, programs, resources. Please, I can't emphasize enough, go onto that website, register for something. We've got all kinds of things going on. Just a very robust um, pro programming that we've, we've put together. So please go on our website and go onto one of those portals and sign up for programming okay. and we're just we would be excited to have you okay well laurie you know i'm gonna tell you come back and join us again <laughs> absolutely <laughs> okay keep keep, <laughs> keep providing that. my pleasure well i'm glad you got i'm glad so keep providing that resourceful information for our community and uh such a great job you're doing such a great job so thank you so i want you to hold for me for a minute while i wrap up all right well, ladies and gentlemen, you know I got to tell you that, hey, I always enjoy having someone come in and sit in the hot chair, well, the cool chair, the cool chair at Just As Talk Show and tell you about what's going on in community. And Lori Hill Sanders, I always invite her back because every time I hear through the grapevine something wonderful that she's doing with the Disability Network of Wayne County, I got to tell it. I got to tell it and I have to share it. So that's why you'll see her from time to time, and we thank her for being available to us to do that. So, ladies and gentlemen, please tune in, and don't forget to attend that event if you can uh, on Tuesday July 26 okay and if you need that information give me a call 1-800-323-5336 what do I always say if you know a person with a disability or if you just have a general question don't be afraid to ask just ask I'm your host see you next time <laughs>